Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover the basics of ridge regression. So let's get started. So ridge regression advantage is to mainly avoid overfitting. Our ultimate goal or our ultimate model is to obtain uh, basically a regression model that could generalize patterns, which means it could work perfect, work you know as, as, as better as we could um, on the training data and on the testing data as well. We don't need a model that's overfitting the data. Okay, so as you guys can see here, let's assume that we have these couple of points here, the red points. Here we have our independent variable X. Here we have our dependent variable Y. And when, if, let's assume that we have two models. One of them is what we call it this blue line here, like dark blue, which is what we call it overfitting uh, the data points, which means it's understanding all the details of the training. However, it fails to generalize. If you test it on a different data set, it will fail miserably. And we have another model, maybe that linear model here, and that's what we call it, let's say, balanced or general model. Okay. So overfitting in general occur, occurs when the trained model performs well during training and performs very poorly during testing. So the overall idea of regularization is that we're going to try to reduce the variance or the variability among two data sets by trying to increase the bias a little bit. Okay, I know it might sound a little bit confusing, but the overall idea is that we wanted the model to perform maybe a little bit worse during training, but for the sake of a greater good, which is the model will become more general and it will become doing well on train during training and during testing as well. All right, let's dig a little bit deeper. So let's assume that we have this practical example. Let's assume that I have these three green points, green dots, and these are the training data. And let's assume that I went out there and we used the least sum of squares to draw a line that goes through the training data. And as you guys can see, because I only have three dots or three points, I've been able to pass a perfect line in here. Looks, looks good, right? Okay, so since the line again passes through the three training data sets, the sum of square residuals is equal to zero, which means that model is perfect during training. However, if we take a look a little bit, you know, like a greater look at the over entire data set, you will find that my testing data set looks very different. So these red dots here, these are the testing data set. So for the testing data set, the sum of, of residuals is large, so the line has a high variance, which means that this line will perform great during training. It actually passes exactly on the training data. However, it performs very poorly on the testing data set. And variance means that there is a difference in fit or variability between the training data and the testing data. And this regression model, we call that it has overfitting the training data set. All right. Again, we haven't like, clearly discussed what they mean by ridge regression. So that's happening right now. So what ridge regression we're going to do, we're going to say, you know what, let's take that line and maybe shift it a little bit, just tilted or rotated a little bit, as you guys can see here. So when we rotate it a little bit, yes, we're going to introduce a little bit of additional error during training because the line now does not go through the three data points. However, the model will perform better during testing. Okay, it will actually become more general. It will generalize during training and testing. And that's the overall idea of regularization. That's all what it is. So ridge regression works by attempting at increasing the bias to improve the variance or to improve the generalization capability. So this, this works by changing the slope of the line. So we took that line, which is the least square regression line, and then we shift it a little bit. We're just going to tilt it, and that would be my ridge regression line. The model performance might be a little poor on the training data, but it will perform consistently well on both the training and testing data set. That's the overall idea. All right, so let's take a look at some uh, mathematics. So as you guys can see here, this is simply our least square squares regression line, okay, which is perfectly matching and going through the training data and as you as you guys recall from previous um, previous slide that all these data points are the testing data points and the least square perform horrible on them so what ridge regression is going to do 
is that we're going to change the slope of the line. So we're going to tilt that line from here and tilt it a little bit. And that's what the idea of regularization is. So the slope has been reduced with ridge regression penalty. And therefore, the model becomes less sensitive to changes in the independent variable, which is the number of years of experience. What do you mean by that? So if we try to compare basically the two uh, techniques, so you find that least squared regression, we're going to try to minimize the sum of the squared residuals, which is simply the error between the points, between the data points and the actual fit, uh, actual line. What ridge regression we're going to do, we're going to try to minimize the sum of squared residual, but we're going to add an additional penalty term, okay, which is going to be alpha times slope squared. That's all what it is. So that's the overall idea of ridge regression. It's just trying to kind of introduce a penalizing term that will, I can tune it, I can, by changing the alpha, okay, I can change the effect of regularization, and that will impact or will change the slope of the line. That's all what it is, okay? All right, so let's take a look a little bit deeper into the alpha term. So the al as alpha increases, the slope of the regression line is being reduced and becomes more horizontal. So as you guys can see here, that's my least squared regression. As you increase alpha, you will find that here you are, the, the slope of the line keeps increasing, I keep, I'm sorry, keeps reducing, and it becomes more horizontal, becomes more flat, basically. As alpha increases, the model becomes less sensitive to the variations of the independent variable, which is the number of years of experience. As you guys can see here, any small change in the number of years of experience will have a large impact on the salary in case of we use this line, which is the least squares line. However, as the slope of the line is reduced, as we actually make it a little bit more flat, you will find that any change will have very small change or impact on the salary. And that's, again, one of the impacts of adding um, the regularization. All right? Okay. And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we're going to walk you through the lasso regression, which is very, very close, pretty much similar to ridge regression. And uh, afterwards, we're going to show you how can we apply ridge and lasso regression in practice. Please stay tuned. Best of luck. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.